Hey guys, so this is going to be, uh, oh, well, first of all, welcome to Dr. E. My name is Dr. E Skateboard. Uh, I like to uh, fix or make my own skateboards, ride and review uh, different skateboards like Boosted, uh, a lot of the cheaper Chinese ones. Um, and the more expensive the Chinese ones like Best Star and Ellenborg. Anyway, um, you know, I crashed the other day. I was going uh, riding my Mad Max Mini. Uh, one of my first prototypes. Um, so let me go ahead and just show you what happened. Um, so this is Vesk. So if you have uh, a Vesk installed on your skateboard, so I have, you know, it's a DIY skateboard, so I have a Vesk installed. If you have uh, the Bluetooth module installed, then you can install the Android app on any Android phone and enable logging. It's under... Uh, let me actually show you. It's under, uh, oh, I gotta connect. Uh, it's under developer, and then make sure to enable RT uh, logging. You guys see that? So go to the developer, enable uh, RT data logging, and choose log directory. First time you might do it, it might not set it, so open it the second time. Once you do that, you can go ahead and copy over that file from your. Uh, uh, your phone after your ride. So here's the CSV file. It's just a CSV file. And what you do is just open up Vesk tool. You don't have to connect it. Just go to log analysis right there. Hit open CSV. Find your CSV file. Open. And what this will do is show you your whole ride. And you can see I started here in my house over here and I was riding around uh, Daily City, Pacifica, where I live. And then I got in the act on the I was almost on the way back. Uh, I get in this. Basically, I fell on myself. I I was sliding out or something. I don't remember because I blacked out. And uh, the ambulance comes. We'll see when the ambulance comes and then drives me all the way to SF Zuckerberg. And if I click here, you'll see uh, the speed. There we go. So GNSS uh, is going to show you. Um, just speed based on um, the gyro uh, or the GPS and you can see it's going 111 miles so I'm in a on the highway uh, 120 kilometers in an amb ambulance and you can see Vesk is zero but let's go ahead and start with my ride of the day and uh, I've been actually trying to go back and see what I did wrong um, but it wasn't my board's fault it wasn't because I was a bad boarder Obviously, I've been electric skateboarding for a long time, and I figured out that it was actually the wheel slipping and that I didn't enable traction control. So here we go. So I start from my house. It's a 30% um, uh, grade incline. So 30, 31, you can see the, the uh, kilometers per hour. Sorry, it doesn't do miles per hour for some reason. Okay, so I'm going 29.64 kilometers. That's on a 30% grade. Uh, let's actually do the math. Um, just go on Google and type uh, tw 20. So the VESC speed is basically the speed of your skateboard, right? And then the GNS is basically uh, your GPS. So the, the, uh, the values might be different, but you really want to go with uh, the VESC, which is more accurate. So that's 18 miles per hour on my Mad Max Mini. I'm going up this hill. That's hella fast compared to my mini um, S seven or seven miles faster, almost twice more. So I go up this hill, I keep going uphill, it's all uphill, 35 kilometers. And then here I decided to go left 38. And all of this down here is a down, it's a really long downhill. So I don't actually press on my accelerator at all. I just go at the gravity. It's like a perfect downhill. Um, so you can see zero motor current, zero amps, battery current. Uh, and you can see I'm actually braking at this point because it's going too fast. And if it's negative, that means I'm regenerating energy. And then I sort of speed up here a little bit, 45. Uh, long story short, I just go through my whole neighborhood here. Um, so I'm on the other side now. I'm going also uphill here, 40. All right, so I'm not I'm not going faster than 40 here, and then I decided to go by Saramani, 46 kilometers, 
44, so I'm going a lot faster. This is all uphill, so I slow down. This is all downhill, so I start uh, probably breaking uh, very heavy um, downhills. And you can see negative 55.76. Look at that. And I'm still going 23 kilometers. So I wasn't going too fast, 42, 43. Here's what killed me, though. So I was really just... So the wheels were fine. I was going, like, not too fast. I'm something under 40 kilometers, which is um, 40 kilometers or less. I was doing pretty good there. <clears throat> um, yeah. So miles per hour. So that's about uh, 25 miles per hour. So 25, I would say, actually... I think it's, you know, most, most like boosted boards are, uh, they top out 25, like involved. The reason is that once you start going above 25, you, you just, things are just going to slip out of the way. Um, especially on these roads, it's not terribly great. And you can see I'm coming back home. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here. This is right before the accident. This is slight uphill. So I'm like, oh, I'm doing well. Okay. I'm going to hit my 48. 45, 35, 26. I slow down because there's a street here, sort of blind. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to speed back up. 54. Oh, no, no, that's the wrong one. A 38. So this is the ambulance coming back later. Uh, 36, 28. And I don't know why I started going too fast up here. And I think the road actually is pretty good here, but it starts turning bad. And then I was just carving. And basically... Had I gone straight or had my uh, uh, traction control on, I would have been fine. But you see, I hit 52.51 kilometers. Okay, 52.51. So I haven't gone faster than 25 miles per hour. And suddenly I'm going um, 10 kilometers faster. So I've been going like around 40 kilometers. And suddenly I'm going 52 kilometers. And that's what really killed me, which is 32.3 miles per hour. And you'll see right here, uh, check out the motor amps battery. And and right there, you'll see it's zero, zero. So I let go of it. I must have started falling. Um, so it's zero, zero. And you could see, you could see it's a zero here. But look at the time. It's 23, 23. So this is when I fell. And um, when I fell, the board obviously slid out and probably was doing a flip so it, it threw off the the gps or the the gyro and then you see how it just sort of jumped here um so since 23 23 23 if you look here so the time goes from 23 23 to 23 48 so it took somebody probably saw me like lying on the ground basically i hit my head first it went through my helmet because it wasn't full face and hit sort of my forehead. It, I didn't brain uh, have any brain damage, but it, it, I had a concussion where I just, you know, um, I was basically blacked out. And I think what happened was I was going so fast, I hit my head first for some reason, how I fell. And then as soon as I lost consciousness, I couldn't do, my body was just dead, my whole body. And then I, you know, basically I dragged my whole body with my head on there. And I actually went and checked out the road, and I actually have the video. Um, you could see blood marks. Basically, I was just, I so I was going so fast, my my whole body after I hit the head, I went unconscious, and then because of the speed, I my body kept, you know, basically screw, you know, scrapping on the asphalt. So I probably stopped, and some there was a bunch of cars here because uh, at, this is right next to the ocean. And a bunch of people car uh, parked the cars here um, that day. And they were actually, you know, because of the COVID-19, people would like to come out there now. And basically, um, so one of them probably called 911. So 23. So after 25 minutes later, wow. So 20. So they probably checked me out a little bit earlier, probably um, put me on you know a stretcher or whatever so it's from 23 it took them 25 minutes for ambulance to arrive and you can see ambulance see the vest is not moving so the ambulance made a u-turn and went on the highway all right and then you know 
and then going fast um, to Zuckerberg SF Hospital where I woke up three hours later uh, and then when I was discharged my vest was still on so it was actually uh, and then I turned it off when I was discharged and you could see it actually going all right and um, the reason why I want to show you this is uh, you always want to after like a bad fall. I mean, because I'm trying to make the world's safest of skateboard, all right? And I'm pushing my body to the limit. And right now, what I really want to do is uh, make like a robot that can actually go on the skateboard and I can remotely control it and try different, uh, you know, different roads, um, different wheels without using myself as a guinea pig. But I had used so much, you know sort of somewhat, you know, had I had a regular urethane wheels, I would have been fine, but I had those MBS wheels and it was all, it was all messed up. Like you saw in my other video, um, some of the wheel was not, you know, smooth at all. Um, so I would totally avoid, you know, if you're not going faster than 20 miles per hour, you're fine with cloud wheels or MBS wheels. But, I, you know, look at this, I was doing fine until I was going too fast. And then one of my wheels spun out, um, so Hobby Wing does not have traction control, but Vesk, you can actually enable it. So if you're gonna use this, you can enable traction control, but it slows down your whole board. That's why I had to turn it off. That's part of the reason. Um, but this show, this is great because, you know, even if you didn't fall, you can, uh, after you build the board, you could check out all your settings. And let me go ahead and show you all this stuff. Vesk, uh, speed, time of the day, uh, trip, uh, motors, and you can overlay this over your your video if you want. There's a play button up here, um, which will overlay it. And it will show you the temperature of the MOSFET. Anything, you know, that you want to read off, uh, it's going to record. You know, even the altitude. You see the altitude. So this right here uh, was a ride where very big altitude changed. So I went from 4 meters completely up uphill to 158 which is uh, meters, which is about uh, 4,500 feet. Wow. No, no, sorry. 450 feet, almost 500 feet. So I just want to show you uh, what happened in my 22 miles per hour crash. Obviously, I was going so fast because earlier I was riding carefully and then I was almost home and then I decided to gun it. And then I was using the wrong wheels. You know, it wasn't... All my fault that I was using MBS wheels that weren't like, you know, that were half grinded down. Um, so from now on, I'm going to start using uh, big urethane wheels, right? Uh, if I'm using big urethane, I'm going to go slower on sketchy roads because I was riding on all car roads. You know, I totally recommend pneumatics because they're going to they have way more grip. Um, you're going to be able to go faster. And based on my experience, like my other boards with uh, the eight inch um, pneumatics, it feels so much slower. So it's safer for your ride. So if you wanna go fast, if you wanna be, uh, uh, you know, to keep it safe, is really to use pneumatic wheels, in my opinion. Um, I know the urethane wheels give you that, oh, sk you know, traditional skateboard feel. But at faster than 35 miles per hour, going on public regular roads, pneumatic mail wheels make sense and you can go off road too, you know? Um, so I think, you know, if you are gonna build a powerful board, like I have been building pretty powerful boards, if they're like 60, 6,000 watts, um, you really gotta think about safety. And I am totally going to move to pneumatics even though they take up more battery life. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're more comfortable. You're going to avoid slips. Slips is how I fell pretty much because the wheels failed to grip. And you don't want that to happen. It wasn't because I was a bad rider. It wasn't because I was making stupid decisions. I mean, usually if there's a bunch of cars behind me, I'll even let them pass. I don't even like people behind me. You know, that way if I fall, you, another thing you have to think about, the reason I was safe, I always practice that and if there's cars behind me I don't really go fast where I let them pass and because there's no cars behind me even though I fell I didn't get run over which is important because I could have got run over because I was completely unconscious it was a big you know four by four truck that you know it was like near sunset so maybe you couldn't see my body and run me over 
and then you you know you basically make a uh, accident into a bigger accident so i just want to share that with you because you know i just want you guys to stay safe and i know there are guys who's going like you know 50 miles 60 miles per hour um this dude on uh sk news forum and you know while a human being can do that a lot of longboard downhillers have the ability to slide and you know go really fast on them and they got the perfect you know position um i just can't recommend it unless you're a professional downhill longboarder and even those guys will pick their spots they're not going to random ass roads they're not going to crappy roads and doing all these um downhills so at the end of the day i think pneumatic wheels or even even rubber wheels even smaller rubber wheels are gonna have so much grip and it's really about the grip once you lose grip uh you're gonna fall and that happened to me and i'm a good boarder and i just never expected to to be unconscious and wake up at the hospital so i hope this gives you um a wake-up call if you have been wearing gear um always wear wear full face helmet all right uh wear a, you know shoulder pads uh, elbow pads knee pads absolutely necessary they have hip pads if you have problems with hips or you're old wear hip pads it's like an underwear you can wear um do those at least and they even have you know like motorcycle boots you can wear which i have maybe i'll, I'll try it i don't know how the grip is but um all of these things allow you to go faster but without your protection you'll fall and you could die and i could look at this i could have easily dead from this so i just want you guys to look at my face look at look at my injuries and this is from wearing full protective gear and i've got i've got a i've got my arm in a <clears throat> Look at this. This is from protective gear. So imagine what would have happened to me had I not been wearing elbow guards helmet. My uh probably probably way worse. I probably like shattered the whole whole elbow, probably broke my shoulders because my shoulders were saved by the shoulder pads. That was a big scratch mark. And then um I'll probably even be in a coma or probably dead without a helmet um hel helmet always number one but the, the important thing is had i had the motorcycle helmet i would have not been unconscious and i would have been able to at least fix myself and i would not have the elbow uh, injury which as was actually caused from not from the impact because i had elbow guards but uh, me being unconscious and then i was dragging my my arm completely unconscious and i think it twisted in a weird way going at 32 miles per hour and slowing down basically dragging my arm and head you know imagine that so um i just want to make this video uh you guys stay safe out there because you know every day every time i go out i go out knowing that this can happen you know and i have protective gear which i thought were gonna prevent me from this happening but obviously i was wrong um you have to think about every little detail so I, I should use better helmets, all right, which could have actually avoided all of this. Had I the right protection, um, I would have just came out unscathed, you know? So watch out there, right safe, okay?